Tonight I'm targeting the Rosette Nebula. It's one of the most difficult targets to not only find in the sky, but then to process once you capture the data. I'm gonna let my go-to mount here help me find it. Once I find it, I know the star patterns, it's pretty easy at that point, but it's hard to find it in the first place. So this go-to mount's gonna be essential. Then once I capture the data, I have to pull it into Photoshop and it is a tough target to pull the information out on. So it's gonna be a challenge. To make it harder, I have never used the guide scope. So this is gonna be my first time using the guide scope. Also my first time using PHD2, the software. I've done a ton of research. I'm feeling pretty confident about it. I think we'll get something. Now it's getting late in the season, so the Rosette Nebula is starting right overhead. I'll be lucky to get two hours tonight. I'm hoping to capture an hour and a half's worth of data. I'm gonna film again tomorrow night and get another hour to an hour and a half. If I could get three hours on this, that would be awesome. We'll see how it goes. I'm auto guiding for the first time. We'll see how it looks. Um, the camera that I'm using is the Canon EOS R. So that is the camera I have on the back of here tonight. So we're going to keep shooting this. I'm getting three minute exposures. I don't feel like I got a whole lot of time tonight, unfortunately. There's my, my chart. Again, it's my first time using it, so don't, don't be too critical. <laughs> I can live with that line. I'm getting a few peaks, but overall it's kind of holding itself pretty steady. So, not too bad. Three minute exposure's going on right now. Boys, not gonna have much time on this target tonight, unfortunately. Well, I managed to get three hours of exposure time. I took three minute subs, and I was using the Optolong UHC filter. Now, you'll notice over my shoulder, that's the stacked photo right there, and it has a blue color cast. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is fix that blue color cast. Then we're gonna mess with the curves and the levels and we're gonna try to pull out that detail that's in there. You can't see it, but it's in there. Now here's the key, when you're shooting the Rosette Nebula, you're not gonna see the actual nebula in any of your subs. You just have to trust that you're on the right spot. You gotta get yourself familiar with the star patterns. I'm gonna bring those up on the screen as well. So I'm gonna show you the stars that I look at to make sure that I'm locked into the right target. Let's go to the computer. Here we are in Photoshop and there's just a couple of things I wanna show you here. First, you're gonna notice that I have a seriously blue photograph. This is because I'm using the Optolong UHC filter, and when I leave it open for really long subs, in this case it was three minutes, I tend to get a little bit of this blue color cast. Not a problem, that's something that's pretty easy to fix. Then, I wanna show you the star pattern that you're gonna look for when you're out in the field, because when you look at the back of your camera, you're not gonna see any of the nebula. So the only way to know that you're really locked into the right spot is to know this little star pattern that I'm gonna show you. First, let's get rid of the blue, and I'm gonna go over and mess with the levels real quick. In fact, let's take a look at the histogram over here. You'll see that I have the blues all the way to the right, the greens here in the middle, and the reds all the way to the left. We need to fix that first. So we're gonna to go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. And here in Levels, you'll see that I've got the red on the left, the green in the middle, and the blue way over here on the right. So I'm gonna to go to each individual color channel, starting with the red, and I'm pretty happy with that right now. I'm not gonna mess with it. So let's go to the greens, and you'll see the greens way out here, and I wanna get rid of all of this useless area that has no data, take it right to the edge of where the data starts, and you will see that my image becomes very blue at this point. Then we're gonna open up the blue channel, and we're gonna do the same thing, get rid of all of this empty space, come right over to where the data starts, and you will notice at this point, you can actually start to see a little bit of the red nebulosity showing up right here in the center. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on YouTube. On my computer, it's showing up. In fact, let's go ahead and do one quick stretch to see if we can bring out some more of that red real quick. So we're gonna go over here to the curves, and I'm gonna do a quick stretch here just to see if we can get some of that color to show up a little better right now. And you can a little bit better here. So right here in the center, you'll start to see some of that red showing up. And again, the blue goes out of control, so we'll just go back to levels, and we'll keep working with the levels and the curves until we get the information we want. For now though, what I wanna show you is the star pattern right in the center of the Rosette Nebula that you wanna focus on when you're taking this picture. There are six stars that I'm looking for. These two here that are right next to each other, come down a ways and you have two more that are right next to each other. And then these two down here, which are just a little offset, but these six stars are a pretty easy pattern to find when you're out there in the field looking at the back of your camera. Those stars are what you want right in the middle of your screen. You want that to be right in the middle of the photograph because that's gonna get you centered up for the Rosette Nebula. 
All right, instead of walking you through the whole process, what I'm going to do now is bring you my final Rosette Nebula, three hours of three-minute subs. Mm -hmm.